Hi, I'm Gabby. I'm 16 years old, and I am a junior at Livingston High School. My nuclear unit is my mom, my dad, and my brother, Alexander. Our family is a very tight-knit family. We do a lot of things together. We are all a family of scouts, so we model ourselves a lot against the scouting oath and laws. And those talk about reverence and strength, truthfulness, and it really showed me how strong I could be and what I could really accomplish. They're, they're both really good combinations of the two of us. Yeah, yeah, and they're, they're <laughs> Only just- Only smarter. <laughs> and they're, they're just good kids. I just cherish all the time that we have with them, and especially knowing how close we came to losing Gabby prematurely, um, you know, that just makes it even more appreciative of, of who we are as the, the unit of four. Stop. <laughs> In 2014, the DeFilippo's loving household was turned upside down when they received some life-altering news. I was laying on the couch, I was trying to take a nap, and my mom put the phone on, she thought it was just like a telemarketer or something, and I remember the doctor's voice saying that she thought I had the leukemia. I remember thinking, that's a cancer, that's bad. And I remember looking out of the uh, ambulance window and just seeing the snow coming down, and then behind the snow there was just blackness and it was almost like the night sky out there. She actually had high-risk pre-B acute lymphoblastic leukemia. That was a, a big slap in the face of anything a parent could, could hear or have to deal with. <laughs> Need a mom. <sighs> this is hard. Gabby has bravely endured more than two and a half years of daily treatments and has made significant progress on her road to recovery. It was a tough time. My mom and sister were constantly living at the hospital. Uh, they would spend weeks on end there. The focus became more about supporting Gabby, getting through it. She was really, really, really upset when they told her she wasn't gonna be able to go to school. And she said, no, mom, I'm not giving middle school to cancer. Gabby's love of writing has helped inspire her every step of the way. And in spring of 2018, she wrote a very powerful Dear Cancer letter, which caught my attention and my admiration. She kept trying to write about something she did in scouting, something that she did in theater or in school, but nothing was like rolling out from the pen onto the page. I am so tired of your name. The way the C clashes against my teeth, how when I see your name, I can only picture it with a capital C, cancer. This anger towards cancer came out of that pen. There's so many parts to it. There's so many different feelings I have on the one hand, I absolutely hate it and wished it never happened to me, but then on the other hand, I'm weirdly thankful for it. I want to be angry at the cancer, but I can't be angry at the cancer. There's so much more than just a disease or an illness. You are not that illness or that event. You are who you are. It's a message of it's okay to be angry. At the same time, it's a message of hope. For all of her life, Gabby has shared a small, cramped bedroom with her older brother. And although home improvement projects have been discussed for years, extended hospital stays have put those projects on hold. What's this? What's what? That's a calendar I got recently. My hero is my daughter, Gabby. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I would hope is that George to the Rescue could come and just create a magical create, space, create that space of creativity for her. that matches her creativity yeah. and a space where she can- Just being uh, a normal kid. Just being a normal teenager. <laughs> I thought I was gonna pass out. I just, I couldn't believe he's, you just, you see, he's this big on TV. Come on, after hearing your story, hearing about Gabby, you think we really wouldn't do this rescue? You just get such a feeling for who you guys are as a family. So that's what it's all about, George Rescue, helping out good people, and you guys are great people. So uh, we're, we're here to, uh, to give you the room that you've deserved 
forever. It's one of those things where you always think, you know, wouldn't that be so cool? Wouldn't that be so great? And it's actually happening, and that's insane to think about. George to the Rescue is sponsored in part by Scotch Painters Tape. For more info, go to scotchbrand.com slash painters tape. The surprise is done. Now it is time to move on to the next chapter. George. Hey, LeVette. Hello, how are you? Oh, I'm so glad to see you. I'm excited to be here. Taking on this rescue from cover to cover is our designer, LeVette Schrem. Gabby and Alexander have been in the same room since the day they were born, and now their parents are saying, Gabby, have your own space, which is incredible. So parents are moving upstairs to what was the family room, and now we're gonna take these small but fantastic rooms and put some big design inside. So Alexander is keeping the original bedroom and this is going to be Gabby's bedroom. So in talking to Gabby, I got this and she loves the outdoors, oh, she loves nice. nature, literature and drama oh, yeah. and acting, they're huge parts of her yes. life. I want to create that world for her in here. Chronicles of Narnia. Okay. Have you read Seen? I, I've read and seen. So there's the lamppost where when they go in through the wardrobe, yep. The lamppost plays a huge role. Yes. So I'm thinking to incorporate the lamppost. I'm all for something different, you know? We've never put a lamppost on any rescue ever before. So congrats, LeVette, on being the first. Now, there's a closet. And we're off. LeVette and I had this amazing moment in Gabby's room. We know that Alexander and Gabby have been sharing the same room for 16 years. Now they're each getting their own bedroom. So we are going to make Gabby's closet the wardrobe in Alexander's room that's Narnia. Now all we need is a witch and a, a lion. And I'm gonna leave that to you. Yeah, you just, yeah, you just hook us up, George. We're dealing with small rooms, so the best way to maximize space is by building custom cabinetry and furniture. And Anthony Carbone from Timber Ridge Construction is tackling all of it for us. The room's a little tight, a little cramped. We want to open it up the space at a pocket door here. We're also going to open up the closet and make a, a double door. A wardrobe. A wardrobe. Yes. I'll just make a pathway. We're dealing with cement board. It's a thick plaster. What I'm trying to do is create channels so that I can get my hands in there and pull off big sheets at a time. There we go. Hammer all the way up. Hammer all the way up, hammer across, and then bam, bam, bam. Just start pulling off sheets. How do we have to deal with this? We'll have to deal with it. No good deed ever goes unpunished. Ripping out this wall, and what do we find but a vent behind the wall that leads into the closet. And this is the closet that we are opening all the way up. We got, we got a vent. Uh, and that's definitely going upstairs. Definitely going upstairs. Um, we're gonna have to look to reroute it. George to the Rescue is sponsored in part by 3M. For more information, go to 3MDIY.com. So here's, here's what we're looking at. So we found this duct in the wall. Now George and I have to run downstairs and see where the ductwork goes and how we're going to reroute it. Is this going to be a big problem? No, so it extends to there. Now we're just going to have to shorten it up okay. and then bring that trunk line up through the bay next to where we're going to have the closet. You make it sound so easy. Uh, I'm not worried. If you're not worried, I'm, I'm not, not worried. I'm not. Construction shall move on. Wow, Anthony, Sebastian and Rob have done a great job. I can see the pocket door and how the whole wall is coming together, but just the, the craftsmanship. Gabby and Alex were so close, always sharing a room together. Sebastian came up with an idea to add a trap door between their two closets so that they could still have a way to go in between the two rooms. They're gonna make a trap door that slides up into the wall. Oh, wow. So that they'll be able to just slide it up, lock it in place, and, and go in between. Well, George, I have Gene from Weather Seal Insulation. And he brought a big truck. What's up, Gene? Yes. How's it going, hey, man? Hey, George, nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. The kids, they've been sleeping in this room, and they had this literally mountain, this wall of stuffed animals. And originally, I just thought they were just like stuffed animal enthusiasts. Yeah. They were actually using the stuffed animals to keep the room warm because the walls were so cold during the winter. So what we're going to be doing in this project, we're going to be drilling a hole about three inches wide in every bay, 
and we're going to take this hose that you see here, yep. and we're going to be putting the hose in the wall, running it down, and we're going to be blowing fiberglass insulation in each bay. Yeah, and that way we don't have to rip out the wall. And for an everyday homeowner, it's a great idea to do that. It's a couple day project and you're done. Now that there's insulation in the walls and all the holes are patched up, it's time for Montero Painting to come in and breathe new life into the rooms. So we are using Scotch Blue Painter's Tape to ensure that we have super sharp paint lines. Hey George. Hey head man. How are you? Long time. Great to see, you. Great to see you my friend. Thanks, you too. So what do you have in store for us in this truck? Well we have made the tabletops that are going to be the desk in her bedroom. They're made out of 150 year old planks from an old barn in Lancaster County. They're really cool pieces of wood. We sanded them down, stained them, three coats of poly so they're super durable. You're going to love them. Construction is going along smoothly. We're actually just about to do our last furniture installation. So I'm going to meet up with the Filippo family and take part in one of their favorite family activities. Kim likes to say, when you go camping, you leave your problems at the park entrance. And for this family, one of those problems was Gabby's diagnosis. Because they continued to go camping throughout Gabby's treatment. This is a special place for this family. And when they're out here, everything else isn't as important as the time they spend together in nature. Hey, you hey! Made it. hey! What's up, guys? How's it going, man? Different families do different things. So I was just really excited to come out here, you know, kind of see what camping with the DeFilippos is all about. All right, let's rock. All right. Nice. You really have to be tight with the people that you're camping with. And I know that the DeFilippos are a tight family, but it's very evident when you're out here in the wilderness with them. They understand everyone has a role. You know, who's going to get the fire going and who's going to kind of set up base camp and how everything's going to be put together. Gabby, you got this. While I was in treatment, I got really weak, and afterwards, there was a lot of like questioning of how strong I was. I don't know if I can actually handle the axe. We'll find out. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, what? El Natural! You split that thing right in half. All right. Oh, you got it, you got it, you got it! Yes! Watching Gabby out here chopping wood, starting the fire with the piece of metal and the knife, I mean, I can tell you what, if I was stranded on an island, I'd want to be stranded with Gabby because she is a survivor. That's the most important thing at the pot for, uh, for dinner. It's important things of camping to me. Yep. Is that camp coffee? Coffee. Gotta have coffee. You gotta have coffee, right? I'm, I'm a chili fan, and if we were having a chili cook-off, I wouldn't even want to put anything against this, because this is phenomenal. All right, guys, you, well, you, you guys taught me how to chop wood, build a fire. What I do know about camping is you have to have s'mores. Oh, so I got some chocolate, some graham crackers, some marshmallows, and boom. Twist that stick out, huh? Is a thing of beauty. And then it that. melts the chocolate, too. So I can make you know, some wars and I can rescue houses. Those are pretty much my only two and strengths. Now and now I can camp. No, seriously, this has been awesome. This has been so much fun. I'm gonna get back to the house, make sure everything's buttoned up so that when you guys finish camping, you have a place to rest your head. Later guys, see you right, soon. Introducing 3M's updated line of Scotch Painters Tapes. Every paint job is unique, but they all start the same way, with the right preparation. The family of Scotch Painters Tape are specifically designed for your surfaces. The best paint jobs start with Scotch Painter's Tape. You got to give it up to Anthony Carbone and the team from Timber Ridge Construction. What they created in Alexander and Gabby's rooms as far as just beds and functionality and the closets and the wardrobe, amazing. I love this, this whole wardrobe, just Whoa. Whoa. pretty good, right? Whoa. It's amazing. One of the focal points of the entire project here was Gabby's closet. We wanted to make that the wardrobe in the Narnia book. Dark wood really looks fantastic, and the hidden passage door is just an, another thing that I think will really make this great for Alex and Gabby. There you go. In the closet. Out the closet, closet. Door, and here we are. Hey. Look at that. Really like good. Magic. Magic. For Levette's whole Narnia theme, putting in this light post was no easy task. Whenever Gabby wants to turn it on, she just has to knock, and our electrician Anthony will he'll turn it on. <laughs> What's up, Anthony? How's it going in there? It's a little tight. It's comfy. Construction is done. Everything looks amazing. Now it's time to bring these rooms to life with some design. Stop. So load the Chevy. So George, I was thinking. Okay. 
And you know, when I start thinking it could be a little... It could be dangerous, be dangerous. in a good way. Can we maybe entertain doing a slight redo for the bedroom for the parents? It's another rescue that I'm working on with George, and I'm walking around, I'm always wanting to do more and add more. I know we don't have a lot of time, but if we can make this happen, I think it'll change the DiFilippo's living from here on in. A little whipped cream on the top of the sundae? You know, Anything? just some, like, you know, paint. Paint? Maybe change a fixture and throw in a few new accessories. All right, let's do it. Yeah? Let's, uh, done. All right. Okay. There was no way he was going to say no to this one, so we're all in. Calico has been super generous and donated all our window treatments, custom bench pillow, and Sumfy, who is a motorized program for draperies and shades, right. have very generously donated to the project. Yes. Super oh, easy. Better than that, George. She can use a smartphone, too. Isn't this cool? Look at this. Yes. Don't cast any spells on me right now. I wish I knew some. Or, yeah, I wish you actually could get this, like, you know, if you could Harry Potter this place right now, just be like, all right, listen, I'm gonna hang that there, I'm gonna hang that there, you, you're there. I want that. All of you booked. When Gabby was in the hospital, Anna Green Gables and The Secret Garden were two books that inspired her and helped her get through her illness. So I thought this was a great opportunity to bring those books, those words, that inspiration into her space. These are if, two of them if, right if, here. If you look the right way, you can see that the whole world is a garden. It's true, it's all in the eye of the beholder, right? There's a lot of beauty out there, but you just have to know where to look. Right, so, or how to see it. Or how to see it. Alexander and Gabby's space, they're perfect. They're exactly what I was dreaming up for them. The cherry on top is that George said yes to tackling Kim and Rob's bedroom, and now the family is ready to see their new space. Without further ado, shall we? Let's yes, go. let's Follow go. me. You have a, a lamppost. You do have a lamppost. <laughs> I have a lamppost. You have a lamppost. <laughs>
So we just wanted to try and get you guys a head start. You guys want to see, see what's going on in the family room? AKA mom and dad's room? <laughs> wow. Ooh. Oh. Wow. Just wanted yeah. to transform it from oh. a family room to a bedroom. <laughs> It's gorgeous. It is. Oh, wow. I do not have the eye of a designer. Had... I did not know what to do up there. Yeah. It just it feels like a grown-up room. <laughs> right, yeah. That's... We have a grown-up room. I mean, you can't have you guys sleeping on the couches, you know? No. <laughs> I'm just so happy that this experience has helped our parents, too. They do so much for us. I mean, they gave us life. Wow, It's look all at this. so overwhelming. Upstairs was family. Now upstairs is just us. Aww. <laughs> More and more, I've been realizing that, you know, everyone's got a backstory. Everyone's got that thing in their past that is just so unbelievably terrible or hurtful or traumatizing. Each minute that you keep going is a blessing. And it's, it feels really nice to be able to show people that there is another side and that we're so blessed.